Now there we are. <laughs> hey. We're recording. Hold on. What was that? We're recording, just so you know. Yes. I have limited vocal power, just so you know. You have like a cold or something? Or? I've been sick quite sick for three or four days, but I'm better today, but um, oh, we got a bunch of participants, so. Good. Um, I will. Oh, I guess you need to make me a co-host. I thought I did. There we go. We have a quorum. And Sarah is listening. Well, maybe I'll just allow her to talk then. Okay. I invited her to join as a panelist, but um, she didn't yet, so. And we have one guest, Jeffrey Vedal. We have two maybe. And John Tyson. Okay, so go ahead, Alan. All right. Um, so I just want to let everybody know who is attending the hearing that this is being recorded and will be available uh, for review off the town website uh, after Friday, um, so Saturday morning, essentially. Um, so uh, in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 87, Section 3, Tree Warden is holding a public shade tree hearing um, today, Tuesday, June 13th, 2023, uh, for the proposed removal of a 17 inch uh, in diameter Norway maple located on College Street, approximately 32 College Street. Um, the applicant to remove this is Eversource um, and partially the town as well, it sounds like. So we're, the town is um, also agreeing with the removal of this tree at this point. So I will just open this up for, um, I guess I should tell you why it's being removed first to request to remove it. 
Um, so Reversource is installing a new um, underground power line that's going to run from the substation uh, up College Street to um, South Pleasant Street along the north side of College Street. So it's the opposite side of the street where the power lines currently are um, above ground. Um, these lines, these conduits that will be installed with large vaults in the ground um, are for new lines that don't exist yet um, to provide power to a new connection they have, which was installed, I believe, this winter um, under the road um, where the construction is taking place for uh, the Route 9 Northampton Road project. Um, the tree essentially will not survive construction uh, that's taking place for these underground utilities in the public way. That, that is why they're being, the tree is being requested to be. Um, just quick, just pop in here. Um, just wondering like the importance of the tree, is there any significance to it or anything other than the fact it's a tree? Um, I mean, it's a, it's a relatively healthy Norway maple. Um, it's the remaining Norway maple of uh, a tree. That section of the road was lined with Norway maple at one point in time. And one by one, they've all slowly declined and, and died and been removed. So this is the remaining one Norway maple that was planted in the grass belt between the sidewalk and the curb of the road. Um, so that is significant in itself that it survived this long. Um, it is an Norway maple, which is an invasive species, which no longer can be purchased anywhere in Massachusetts, um, but they are naturalized and growing, you know, have been planted for years across the Massachusetts. So. Thank you, I appreciate you answering that question. You're welcome. I can also add that um, the tree shades an area that gets no shade from any other tree. It's a standalone tree, so for that reason, it felt important to me. Thank you, Henry. Oh, I, I, I see your concern there. That makes sense. Um, so I think, do we have any other questions from our um, guests who are on the Public Shade Tree Committee? I do. I do, sir. Um, it might be a little loud in the background because my wife is vacuuming, so I'm sorry for that. Um, but I want to ask, is there a certain budget we're going to go over for this? Um, and yeah, that's, that's my question. Thank you. Okay. So, um, the town, um, is not going to incur any cost, uh, for the removal of this tree. The, the applicant will do that. Um, so I'm not seeing the town being our budget being impacted by this. As far as the removal of the tree goes, um, the contractor the applicant is responsible for removal of all the parts of the tree or paying for the removal of all the parts of the tree. Um, oh, yeah, may, 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 may I talk to the person who made the complaint? I just want to hear this out of the story. I'm sorry, I don't understand the question. Um, is the... Um, person who had filed the complaint in this Zoom call currently. I just want to hear the side of the story. What, I haven't heard a complaint yet. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, the question or just? No, I think the, the last person who was just talking like personally messaged me some complaints. So I was just a little confused or something. Okay, I haven't seen any um, messages yet. So uh, I'm getting, uh, um, Sir, whoever would like to speak or answer me, I'm getting direct messages. It says from anonymous, and they're sending inappropriate pictures. So I'm also I, getting. I'm also getting that right now. Is anybody else getting those? I don't know what's up. It, it's it's to the Mayo genitalia. <laughs> okay, Henry, can we block all this? Yeah, can we please block all this? It's just like it's too much. Like I don't know if you guys can personally block it because it is a direct message to me. So I don't know. It's someone trying to hit on me. I just find it extremely inappropriate. I believe the person who sent it was um, 
Ellen, I think Ellen was setting these out to people. I don't know. It was kind of strange. Did you also get it from Ellen? Um, whoever was just speaking. No, none of us. John got Tyson. It. John Tyson. Did you also get it from Ellen? What happened? Are you saying from Ellen? Did you also Ellen? It, it was Ellen. It was Ellen. Didn't you also get that, John Tyson? It wasn't Ellen, sir. It was. It said anonymous. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm just assuming that. I'm just assuming it was Ellen because she hasn't piped up one time this entire meeting. So, I don't know. It seems a little bit nefarious to me. Um, so those are probably spam bots. I'm not sure. I think I, I think Jeffrey Vattel. Um, Henry, I think Jeffrey Vattel is a Zoom bomber. If you guys go back I to, I don't think um, so. Yeah, I know what I can do. I'm going to remove you from panelists. Can you, can, you kick, can you kick Jeffrey? I think he's... Yeah, can, no, can you please kick John Tyson? He's so annoying. He's annoying me so much right now. Henry, this is... This is, this is, having fun with us. This is, this is horrible. This is just horrible. I mean, please, we're getting bombed by these two guys. This is not... Bennett, Bennett, can you please mute up, Bennett? Like, I'm trying to understand this thing and it's just keep talking. No, Jeffrey, I'm not. Would you guys yes, please you will, Bennett, please call? mute up. Jeffrey, you're muted and you have your hand raised. So if you want to speak, you still can. Okay. Actually, he may. He's gone. So, all right. Ellen's back. There's us. Ellen's. <laughs> There's only three panelists. What happened to everybody? Where's Bennett? He might have left to try to rejoin. Um, Henry, could you try to make me a panelist again? I don't. I didn't see that option. Okay, did it twice, but sure. Yeah, I don't know. It's not. It's not popping up for me. Oh, there. Okay. Okay. So. Um, I appreciated their questions, but uh, right, uh, still missing Ben. Yeah, but, uh, he said uh, he suggested we quit and restart, so I texted him that those two. Are no longer a panelist, so he can join back in. <coughs> well, um, what happened to uh, Julian? Julian left earlier. I noticed that he was gone before okay, those well, other yeah. people were bantering. There's Bennett. Okay, so we have a quorum. Let's continue. All right. Um, everybody. So if we have any guests in attendance, does one look like it? Chris Bambucas. Is 
Does Chris have a question? I have to allow him to talk. Or did you just do that? I did not. There it is. Uh, Chris, you have your hand raised. If you'd talk now, it would be good. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm sorry. Um, I'm actually uh, Energy and Sustainability Committee in Belchertown, and I'm just listening in. Um, I met with Britt uh, a couple weeks ago, and she told me I should listen in on these calls because we want to do something similar in Belchertown. So I'm just observing. Did you have any concerns or questions around the the tree that is being proposed for no, I don't. Okay, thank you. Well, Chris, right after this at five thirty, we have our regular meeting, which may be more of use to you. So, yep, it's a different link. It's on the town website as well. I saw that. I'll join there as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And um, Julian's computer crashed, so he won't be joining back. Oh, oh. Um. He's rejoining on a different device. Okay, well. So I would like to open this up to um, discussion with the committee. Uh, we had a site visit. Um, would you like to discuss um, the removal of the tree at this point? Remind me, it's been a while. Um, there, do we know that there is no other option for Eversource, like to go on the other side of the street? Um, I'm told that this is the side of the street they need to go on. The other side of the street, they're proposing to put a different set of underground lines there. Um, so essentially, the three phase that you see above ground, plus all the communication lines that hang below those uh, would go on that other side of the street. Thank you. So the, the, um, the line they're proposing to put in, I believe is not sort of, it's, it's more of a transmission line than a distribution line. So the transmission lines are the ones that kind of move electricity long distances, but don't really feed any of the, the areas in between them. Um, so this line is just trying to get power up the hill to another junction where it will be distributed. Um, Whereas the lines on the other side of the street are distribution lines. They're um, distributing electricity to each structure as they go down the street. I have a question, Ellen. Well, would we be able to plant on the side of the street that the tree marked for removal or for the hearing is on after they do this work? Or is there a, you know, like a no plant buffer or whatever mm -hmm. for the, the transmission line that they're putting in? Yeah, so um, we would be able to plant, you know, right around them. Um, the the conduit is going underneath essentially the sidewalk um, for part of the road. Part of the way it's in the road, part of the way it goes up onto the sidewalk because of already existing underground utilities. Um, so in this particular section, the power lines are actually going to be up on the sidewalk side. So we would be able to plant in the setback. Um, with Amherst College. Chris has his hand raised still. I'm not sure if that was from the question previous or not. No, sorry. No, that's okay. And Alan, you said um, the town's already approved this. Well, they've given source permission. Uh, they filed for a permit to, to put the infrastructure in, in the public way, and they already have that. So. And the town approved that. Yes. Could we ask for money to be paid into the tree fund to pay and re replace the tree so that we could do plantings along along that side of the street when the work is done? I think you can, can always ask. Um, I think the town looks, and I, I have to admit that I do look favorably upon 
uh, Eversource because of all the work they do for the town. So it, it's um, they remove you know tens of thousands of dollars worth of trees for us that are dangerous and we can't do. Um, they prune one side of the street <laughs> every four years um, so that I don't have to do it. Um, so it's it's um we can always ask. Is there precedent? Have they done things? Have they like paid into the tree fund for projects similar to this before? The only thing that comes to mind for me is um, the only time they've been charged for a replacement tree was when they took down an inappropriate tree that was not um, permission. There was a misunderstanding between myself and the, and the Eversource. Um, about what tree was supposed to be removed and they took down the wrong tree. So um, that's the only time that I remember them being um, charged the, the um, replacement cost. Okay. I guess I, my feeling is that the work needs to be done and it's basically has all of its other approvals, but that we should ask that they pay into the tree fund. I don't know how much um, if we want to try to figure out an amount that seems appropriate for retreeing that side of the street when the work is over. Um, it, it's hard to figure out how much because that, that's a big tree. It's like a nice big shade tree. So, you know, putting in just one little replacement tree is really not going to it's not the same, it's not the same value. Um, but if we could put in a bunch of different trees and like retree that whole side of the street, that that will be something in a couple, <laughs> a couple of years, so. So the, the inch per inch replacement cost, you know, our policy um, states that it would, you know, a $90 per inch replacement cost would be about $1,500 for, uh, that would go into the tree fund if they were doing that. Um, and with the town, um, I should say town, I certainly have uh, plans to plant trees along that side of the street um, when we get to that point. Um, so. And we now fortunately have the money to do that. So we have the line item in the budget to, to plant trees. And Amherst College has expressed a lot of interest in replanting um, that section of the street. So. All right, do we wanna make a proposal, anyone? At the I, tree I mean, I just, I feel frustrated that like, I feel like it's a done deal. So I'll make a proposal that we don't want to take it down just because it's a nice tree and it's healthy. And I don't know, I hate that we keep losing trees. Uh, I just wanted to pipe in. I apologize, my computer crashed. So I had to rejoin on a new computer that camera is a little fuzzy for some reason. Um, but I can hear you just a brief, understanding so I can get an understanding of what the idea here is. Is there any reason they can't put the, dig the wires on the other side of the street so that they avoid this tree at all? Yeah, uh, Julie, they did ask, that question has been asked and you unfortunately missed it. So um, the line that they're, the underground kind of they're putting in is for a new line that doesn't exist right now. Um, and it's to, it's more of a um, transmission line. So it's transmitting power from one point to the next with no sort of taps going off of it. The, the lines that are currently above ground on the other side of the street are distribution lines and they distribute the power to house to house or building to building as they go up the street. So these, this is a very different type of line than the other side of the street. Um, and the talk is, is that those lines on the other side of the street and all the communication lines that hang below those power lines are, are planned to go underground as well. So um, in the near future, um, 
we will have a once in a lifetime opportunity to completely uh, replant that whole street, uh, which will be nice. Okay, so there are two different types of lines and thus they can't, they have to dig up more than just the one side of the street. Um, so I guess what I'm wondering is, is there any way to offset it? So they dig up like most of the street and part of Amherst College property rather than that tree or something along those lines, or is that not a possibility? So I'm told they tried putting everything in the street where they could, unfortunately due to already buried infrastructure, um, they have to leave the road at that point and go up towards the sidewalk for, for a length of time where um, they can fit their conduit in. And there, there's conduits and these, these large vaults, concrete vaults, which are, you know, like, I don't know, 18 by like 20 or so, and, and probably 12 or so feet tall. They get buried in the ground every so many, you know, feet. Um, and that's where the lines, lines are connected and joined. And there's a point for them to get into this infrastructure and maintain it. Uh, we did the same thing when we undergrounded the utilities on um, East Pleasant Street um, when that road was redone and the roundabout was built. So it was this, this massive um, underground infrastructure that it's more than just a piece of PVC pipe there. So it couldn't, you couldn't theoretically have it angle up towards the sidewalk in a different location theoretically, and then keep going down the sidewalk because the large underground infrastructure is halting the ability to do that. And that infrastructure can't be moved. The existing infrastructure can't be moved. So they're not, um, they need to go around it at this particular section of the road. And the tree like is the only, the tree is in the only line where they can go around it. They can't go around it in another line. That's what I'm told. I haven't okay. seen the plans. Yeah, so. no. I I've just talked to the engineers. So in the interest of time, since our other meeting's starting in four minutes, um, Ellen's made a proposal. Do you want to say that again? Um, I propose that um, we vote to keep the tree. OK. Any other questions or changes or should we vote on that proposal? Okay, all in favor of Ellen's proposal to say no to the removal of that tree. Hands? It needs to be seconded, I think, Henry. Oh, okay, I'll second it. Will someone else call the vote then. Could, could we addend it that if they disregard our motion entirely, that they still pay into the tree fund? I just feel like they're going to ignore what we say, and then we're not going to get anything for it. And I want yeah. a backup plan. I just, I just think it's worth investing in the trees, even if they take it down against our wishes. OK. Do you accept that, Ellen? Yeah, absolutely. So let's vote on that we do not allow removal of the tree. But if they remove it anyway, <laughs> they need to pay into the gift tree fund based on 17 inches at $90 per D inch. DBH. OK, all in favor of that, raise your hand. Aye. Julian, did you raise? Yep, aye. Support. Well, that's unanimous then. All right. Um, thank you for that. Um, so let's see, it is 528. Um, so, I mean, I, I just want you to know my opinion um, and why I'm going to approve the removal of the tree. Um, it's, you know, we can leave the tree and the damage to the root zone is going to be so severe that it's probably going to fall over into the road. Um, so, the project is going to get built um, and 
you know, we just need to look at this as an opportunity to lose one tree and, and end up with a, a whole new streetscape that will be there for generations to come. So um, it's going to be a process. There's going to be a lot of construction. Sidewalks are going to need to be fixed. Um, the roads will get repaved. Um, but I think in the end, we're going to, we're going to have a, a, a nice new section of College Street there. So it's, um, it does look bare. And it's going to look worse for a number of uh, possibly years until everything is completed. But um, it's going to be a, a good project in the end. So I'm going to approve the removal of the tree. Um, and hearing no objections from anybody or having not received any letters to object to the removal of the tree, um, I will vote to remove the tree. Um, but thank you. Public Safety Committee for making this the point that it does have a value and we should be um, reimbursing the town for that. And I will have discussions with them about that. Um, overall, in the large scale of the project, it's a minute. Uh, yes. cost, but, but, uh, it is One a nice of us could um, challenge that now, and then it would go to Paul Bachelman, who I'm sure would approve it. So I don't see a point to doing that. Yeah. That was um, great. So thank you for your time and for the site visit and in all the discussion. And I'm going to end the um, tree hearing at this point. Again, if anybody wants to see it, it's available after Friday on the town website to view. Um, so thank you. And I'll see everybody at the, at the meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Alan. Thanks.